TensorFlow Timmy and PyTorch Peter. Timmy thinks that to break into AI, you need to memorize every theorem in every textbook ever written. He spent six months rederiving the softmax function from scratch. Once I prove the universal approximation theorem again, then I'll be ready to start my first project. PyTorch Peter? He's different. Peter pushes his code, deploys an app, then heads out for a workout, comes back to read a book, goes on a date with his girlfriend, and wraps up with a late night call with a recruiter. Peter knows the math matters, but he also knows that building real world projects is what actually gets you the job, the crazy salary, and the respect we all want. No one asked me to derive an eigenvector during my Amazon interview. They asked about my portfolio. In the past year, I've landed offers from companies like Amazon and Google, paying over $200,000 a year. I've also helped countless other people land their dream offer in AI engineering. And the number one project in my portfolio and my students' portfolios is fine-tuning an LLM, customizing a model for an industry-specific use case like education, healthcare, productivity, coding, whatever interests you most. So in this video, I'm going to break down how to actually build this project, the libraries you need, the data sets you should use, and all of the steps in between that you need to follow. Again, building this project is absolutely essential if you want to break into AI engineering. Without it, your portfolio will never be complete. First, we need to contrast fine tuning with prompt engineering. Prompt engineering tweaks how we ask questions to a model. Fine tuning tweaks how the model thinks. We're actually going to train the model for some more iterations. And here's why this matters in a portfolio. Hiring managers see hundreds of generic AI resumes, but a fine tuned LLM project screams that you can build a real AI product. This project has become a conversation starter for me in almost any interview and for my students as well. Okay, how do you actually pick the use case? You want to choose an area where you actually care about the domain. That'll make the project way more interesting. Again, this could be legal, finance, healthcare, literally anything. But ideally, pick a use case where domain-specific language is going to matter, like legal document summarization, a medical chatbot, or code generation. One guy I know fine-tuned an LLM on medical notes and ended up getting an interview at a healthcare startup because of it. In fact, pause the video right now and comment below what use case you would pick. And once you've picked your use case, you're going to need to know what libraries to use. First, the Hugging Face Transformers library. This is the go-to library for loading models, tokenizers, and fine-tuning routines. Hugging Face datasets are also free and super useful. You can pull in structured data incredibly easy from this resource. You're also going to want to use PEFT or Parameter Efficient Fine Tuning. I know it's a mouthful, but bear with me. This is going to make the fine tuning way more efficient and eliminate the need for a crazy expensive GPU. Something that's optional but cool is using weights and biases for tracking experiments. Ultimately, these tools matter because companies actually use these and working with them shows that you're ready to work on production level AI. The data set is actually your secret weapon. Prioritize quality over the size of the data set. So you have two options here. You could use a public domain specific data set, like something from Stack Exchange for coding, something from PubMed for medical text, etc. Or you could build your own data set. You could scrape data from the internet or simply annotate data that's relevant. It's really up to you. And again, a few hundred data points is really all you need to fine tune an LLM. Quality over quantity here. For example, one of my students was trying to fine tune a model on a completely messy data set and got terrible results. But once I helped him clean it up, the performance of his model skyrocketed. Okay, let's run through the game plan. Step one is to pick your base model. What model are you starting with? I recommend a model like GPT-2, one of the older GPT models from OpenAI, or one of the Llama models from Meta. Both are open source. And I recommend open source because one, they're free and you can actually fine tune and deploy them without any legal headaches. Second is the tokenizer setup. The tokenizer is a component of our workflow that actually splits a large body of text into a series 
properties of words or tokens. And make sure your tokenizer matches the model or you'll run into some very painful bugs. Step three is to pre-process your dataset. Remove any garbage and format it into prompt response or question answer. Example, if you're fine tuning for a medical chatbot, the input is the actual question and the answer should be the doctor style response. Step four is to set up LoRa or low rank adaptation. Again, I know it's a mouthful, but that's what's gonna let us fine tune without any expensive GPUs. In fact, this can be done on Google Colab in your browser where they have free GPUs accessible. Step five is to run the training. You can use Hugging Faces Trainer or write your own training loop for fun. As always, watch your error curves and stop the training when performance seems to plateau. Step six is to evaluate. In addition to reporting actual quantitative metrics, run some example inputs. Does the model sound like an expert in the domain? These manual checks are important in addition to just checking your error and accuracy numbers. All right, time for the question you may have had all along. How do you actually present this project on your LinkedIn or your portfolio so that you can get interviews and job offers? Don't just say, I fine-tuned an LLM. Be specific. Something like fine-tuned open source llama model on 10,000 plus legal documents to generate plain English contract summaries is going to sound way better, especially to a non-technical recruiter. Lastly, how much time is this actually going to take you? Well, it depends. In a weekend, you could put together a basic proof of concept and then maybe another week to really polish it and deploy it. If you start the project today, you could have it live by next weekend. Now, if you'd like my help shortcutting the entire process of building a portfolio, click the link in the description. We've helped countless people land their dream offer in AI engineering. And if you're looking for another video to watch, one where I go over even more recruiting and hiring strategies, check this one out. You don't want to miss it, and I'll see you soon.